let's look at the types of sampling for observational uh, studies. Now, th there are many different types of sampling methods, and some sampling methods are combinations of different types. Okay, so for example, multi-stage sampling is a process of combining sampling methods to, to break down the population to manage chunks before the sampling takes place. Uh, once the population is defined, identify how does one sample from it. All right, so these are again uh, types of sampling methods. And so let's look at this one. It's called a simple random sample. And a lot of things that we're going to do are going to uh, invoke this, the simple random sample. Um, and this is the best, best uh, method. But it, why is, this is the best method? Why don't we just use it all the time? The answer is because it's very hard to accomplish in um, real life. But it still is a sampling technique. So which one is a simple random sample? Okay, so the, the one thing that we want to kind of get across is somehow the population question is somehow enumerated. So there's two here that, that have this exact same trait. Um, it's another one that where it's enumerated. And as a matter of fact, this one's also in that same vein. It's not in here. But in this scenario, uh, simple random sample, imagine that again, this, everything is somehow um, enumerated, but for what purpose? It, it is so that when we sample any value in the population is equally, sorry, yeah, any object in the population is equally likely to be shown, which in turn means that um, any sample of that particular sample size is equally likely to be chosen. And so this one right here turns out to be simple random sample. And we uh, will abbreviate it as SRS, simple random sample. So, you know, once we identify the population question, sample in such a way that any member of that population is equally likely to be chosen. The hallmark of such process is that all the samples of the same size are equally likely to be chosen. Another way of kind of thinking about this is that we are gonna put every object in the population in a hat, put little marks and then draw from the hat. Or um, if you somehow you can enumerate everything, you let a computer pick um, certain out, you know, uh, numbers at random, and then those other objects that are picked from the population. So this one here is, this is a simple random sample. What about this one that we were messing with? This one is the systematic sampling. And what makes it systematic? So notice it's still the same approach, um, but we're gonna have to enumerate it because it requires one more uh, feature. So my name is like a number in this enumeration. That object is selected to be part of the sample. Then after selecting that object, you skip a fixed amount of objects to get to the next object. So the reason we need enumeration is that suppose again you have a number a number one, a number two, number three object, number four. So once we pick the first object, say it's number four, we need to decide how to skip to the next one. Let's say we we uh, decide to skip every two. So five, six, so one, two, and then we pick the next one. So then number seven would be, then we pick skip the next two, eight, nine, and pick the next one. So 10 will be the next object picked. So the idea is that the first object is picked at random. Then after that, we skip. We skip count sort of to get to the next object. But we do this only if somehow we are able to enumerate so we know how to pick the next value. Okay? This would can also be enumerated, but instead, when we enumerate, we just select here numbers at random. So imagine, uh, for this system, it's more like, uh, say you have a thousand possible values, then you imagine that it's a die with a thousand values on it and you just roll it and then whatever shows up, that's what you pick. Or if it's a little hat like this, 
then you have a thousand tickets and you pick randomly, you know, swirl it around and then pick the numbers out of the hat. Okay, so this one is systematic. Sampling. All right, um, again, everything we have to, to identify the population in question. Uh, let's see, let's try this one, volunteer sample. What is a volunteer sample? Well, in a volunteer sample, it just means that the researcher is not in control. Okay, we're not in control of uh, who is going to participate or what objects are going to be chosen to, to be part um, of the measurements. So it turns out that this one right here is a volunteer. Oops, that's the end there, volunteer sample. So identify the population question, okay, that's true for all of them. You can announce via some process that participants are wanted for a study. Allow anyone who wishes to participate from this population to join the study. So obviously this volunteer sample has to be people. We're, we're, we have to be measuring something, but um, the object being uh, measured have to be human because they're gonna self-select. So volunteer sample sometimes is also called self-select. Okay, to, to participate. Now, some people confuse self-select with, um, like if it's human beings, if you're selected to participate in something, you can deny, uh, say, well, I don't wanna participate. And they go, well, isn't that like a volunteer sample? Because you, the person can deny. Uh, and the answer is no. And a volunteer sample, it starts out with a researcher having no control over who is going to participate. In a simple random sample or a systematic, for example, that we've already looked at, the researcher is in full control of who they're going to choose. That person, if it's a person, for example, if it's a person, but if it's a person, that person can say no, but that doesn't make it volunteer, okay? So that's that one. So that's all it's systematic. A stratify and cluster together are very similar in that the, the, the population has to be divided, okay? So notice divide the population, break up the population. So both of these involve breaking up uh, the population somehow. But the difference is, how they're broken up. Okay, divide the population in question into groups such that every group is representative of the population. So this is the key thing to this one. So the way we're breaking up uh, the population is in groups such that every group is representative of the population. Okay, again, not perfectly. Choose n groups at random. Once the groups have chosen, sample all objects in that group or random select objects from that group. Again, if it's really big, then you may, maybe you can't sample all of them in all the objects in the group. And what is this one? Uh, <clears throat> this one's called cluster. So in cluster, a cluster, so what is a cluster? Cluster is, uh, a, sorry, I'm going to go over here, a cluster, think of it this way, is a mini representation of the population. Okay, so that's what a cluster is. Okay. So that's that one. So then what's stratify? Well, let's look at stratify, which is of course this one right here. Identify the population in question. Break up the population just like we did before, but into groups that share a common trait. So the difference is that when you break things up in a stratified sample, each group has some kind of common feature. And unlike a cluster, a cluster 
every group is a mini representation of the population and a stratified sample is the exact opposite. It's not that that's the case. That is the objects in each group share similar traits, something, something. For each example, uh, for each, for example, uh, sorry, right there. <laughs> For example, separating a human population into groups by age ranges. So now the age ranges are the strata, what is it called? Sample from each of these groups to create the sample. So what's going to happen is once you break things up, you're going to sample from each little group and then combine the whole um, sampling process to form, again, a representative sample. So individually, they're not representative. So again, a strata sample, once you break it up, you'll sample from each other, for example, age groups. Once you did that, then you combine those to form the sample at the end. If uh, that doesn't not seem um, to make sense, let me do the following. I'm gonna do a cake just to, so you can understand the difference between the two. Okay, so here's a cake, and here's a piece of that cake that I just took out. So let's say that we cut the cake like this. To several pieces. Okay. We can even do more. And we just happen to cut this one. This cake represents a cluster piece. If we grab another one, grab this one out of here. This is also a cluster. Okay, so and I'm going to make this a little more. Cute. And say that each one of these, like there's different layers, like there's a certain number of uh, flavor here. And it's not, it's not even this, you know, different sponge, like a sponge cake or a chocolate cake. So by grabbing, we usually cut a cake, we usually grab a cluster. So in other words, this piece should be representative of the entire cake. Uh, and as people grab more, each one is a little representation of the, the cake itself. And that's a cluster. But what's a strata? What else? In a strata, you would have to, for example, cut in such a way that, um, so each disc here, so you have the top disc, maybe it's in one flavor. And then there's another disc here for this middle part. And then there's another disc here for the lower part. We're just making up the cake, let's say it's different flavors. And then there's the frosting uh, that's in between the cakes. So So in a, in a stratified um, sample, what would happen is we would cut one out of here, sample one piece, maybe grab a little chunk here, sample that, then come over here and sample this, then come over here and sample this. And then what you would have is, um, I sample this, and then you have all the pieces. So each little piece that you've grabbed now is uh, not representative of the cake individually. Let me draw three different colors here. Along with the, the frosting that we grabbed here. And so if you want to get a representative of the entire cake, if you ate this 
piece of the cake, it would not be representative of the entire cake. If you ate this alone, it would not be representative of that cake. And if you ate this alone, it would not be a representative of the cake. Only together do, does it form a representative group. So this would be stratified. Okay, so you, you can notice from this cluster, we're gonna grab from the whole thing, pull it out here. I'm gonna just grab randomly and then piece it together to get the form of the group. So anyway, these methods are very basic. Uh, sometimes we use them in combination of things to try and come up with a sample that is hopefully representative. Uh, we'll make one last thing, uh, note. Uh, even though we mentioned volunteer sample, it's more of a what not to do. So volunteer samples, are not using science, not. Because in the long run, the uh, summaries obtained from samples, from this type of sampling, uh, are not representative. In other words, um, they suffer from uh, sample bias. Is it possible that you can use uh, get a, a sample from from a volunteer sampling method and it is actually representative? The answer is yes, uh, but that's not what we're saying. Is we're saying that it's not that it's impossible. It's that in the long run, that doesn't happen. Um, majority of the time is not going to be representative of the population. Um, and again, representative, it doesn't mean that it's exactly proportional to the population you're under study, but um, it's going to be in the long run off enough and it could, could be potentially considerably off um, more often than if we use one of these other methods. So these will also have a little bit of bias or some kind of bias, depending how well we execute these things. But uh, this one for sure uh, has been shown that it, it, uh, it doesn't work. So we don't use volunteer samples. Um, you notice that now it, this doesn't happen anymore, but um, I remember that definitely in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s, uh, sometimes uh, TV stations would uh, put up a number on their TV screen to, concerning some topic that they were discussing, you know, call this number if you believe that uh, the governor should do this. Call this number if you believe the governor should do this. Um, and then they would be good with that, right? And they would tell you the results later. But unfortunately, that is a typical uh, volunteer sample. People can call up and say whatever they want, but... It, the people that are calling, uh, potentially the group as a whole, as an entire whole for that particular sample, most likely is not going to be representative of the population that this question is being uh, posed to. So um, it, should, it shouldn't be trusted. Nowadays, in the, in the 90s and the, the early 2000s, they started still doing this. But TV stations would say the following. They would do exactly the same approach. It was really a volunteer sample, but they would say uh, results um, are not scientific or something like to that effect, which was a fancy way of saying, I don't know what they said actually, scientifically sound or something. I, I don't know, so I, I misspelled scientifically wrong. 
Uh, but the, really, it was a way to say, well, see this, what we just did, it really doesn't mean anything. The, 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 the result from the sample they took only represented the people that called, and that's all. We couldn't uh, infer anything from it for that population.